We wave to them in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Today I want to finish up on uh, speaking about the body of Christ. Um, we looked at Jesus. We looked at God the Father. We looked at the church. And then I'm going to finish up with looking at the Spirit of God. Amen. So, uh, so for those who have been with us from the beginning... For those who have been with us from the beginning, I hope you are able to teach now something. Amen. Amen. Are you able to teach one topic? Sunday will be the one heading the next discipleship class. I hope so. All right. Next Sunday I will not be around, so Pastor Martin, I think, will take over and start teaching on the Holy Spirit. So please prepare. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Chapter 12, sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12. Are we there, Vicky? Hi guys, how are you? Good to see you. Hi. Good to see you, Baba. Love you. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12. Are we there? It says, just as the human body is one. Uh, give me New King James Version, please. All right. He says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13. It says, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews, Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink from one spirit. Um, Let's jump to verse 20. Um, let me start from verse 26. From verse 26. It says, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. From verse verse 27. Now you are the body. He's talking about you. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you. It says, you are the body of Christ and members individually. It is very important for us to understand that. We are part collectively, go back, verse 27. We are part collectively of the body of Christ and we are members. Just as um, the body has so many members, so is Christ. And he says we are members, but we are also members individually. It means that everyone has a role to play. Amen. Verse 28, it says, and God has appointed this in the church. First who? Come on, come on class. First who? Apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrators, varieties of tongues. Uh, Verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. And verse 30, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with, it, with tongues? Do all interpret? But honestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way, and we'll look at chapter, 31, uh, chapter 13 and how, what he talks about the excellent way. But it's important for us to understand that we are part, that when we got saved, um, one of the things that pleases God, and, and it is important for us to understand, as I said, it's important for us to understand the will and the purpose of God and what are these things that please God. And how would I know what pleases God? The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, that offer your bodies as living sacrifices, uh, holy and acceptable before him, 
And, and he says, do not be conformed to the standards of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? He, said, he says that you renew your mind by this, by, by, by the word of God. And he says, after you renew your mind, then you will be able to know what is the good pleasing and perfect will of God. That's how we get to know what is the perfect will of God. That's how I get to know what pleases God. If I submit my mind to be renewed by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That makes me not depend on the opinions of men. Why? Because if I submit to the spirit of God, then that shows that I have taken what is the wisdom of this world and considered it nothing so that I may gain the wisdom of God. Amen. Remember I say that the Spirit of God is a leader. And he says that they that are led of the Spirit. It means that when I wake up in the morning, Evans, the first thing is I need to ask the Holy Spirit, please lead me today. I may not hear. He may not speak all the time and tell me, Pige ikona, inua nini, inua mgu, kanyaga chini. He may not direct me <laughs> to do all things so as to show that he is a leader. But he gives you the wisdom and to be able to be able to tackle the things things that comes in your life. Amen. Amen. He gives you the wisdom to be able to deal with your wife, to deal with your children, to handle your bosses, to handle the activities that you have been given and the tasks that you have been given that day. That means that I do not, uh, as long as I am working, it's, it doesn't mean that I keep on praying. It's, I do not, the Bible says be consistent in prayer. It does not mean that I pray all the time. You know, I'm talking to my boss. And they, 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 it, you're not communicating, you're becoming a fool. It means that I am in contact with the, what the Spirit of God, I'm in tune with what the Spirit of God is teaching me. Hallelujah. I am in touch with heaven. Because scripture tells us that when he prayed the whole night, he came down from the mountain. You need to come down from the mountain so that you can be able to do the assignment for which the Father has assigned you for that day. The scripture that we are reading here today, we are reading about the body of Christ and Christ is telling us that as important as every part of your body is, that's how important that each and every one is to the body of Christ. If you study that book, chapter 12, it even tells that, it even says that there's a... How can one part say, hey, since my job is not lifting things, then I don't need to be part of you. My eye will say, hey, you know, lifting things is not, my, is not my problem. So I will not be. But you see, you need to see what you're lifting. If you're not understanding the season and the times that we're in right now, as a church, where we are right now, we need every member of the body of Christ to be a part of the work that we are about to do. Because the season that God is entering us into, we can't do it as pastors. Every member of the body. Let me tell you, last week, I was cutting my nails and then I cut. Apa musho. Cute. Na kuambia ni kidole yangu likuwe mevimba. I could not be able to write. It is like a small thing that needs to be removed from your body. But the pain that I was feeling on my finger, I could not even sign anything. So you can imagine that part that you think is very insignificant in your body. The body, the, this scripture is telling us that that part is very important. It means that there is something that you contribute to the body of Christ that we all need. We have read in verse 26, and if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, then all members rejoice with it. I know we take the Holy Communion. And one of the things when we're taking the Holy Communion, I know we talk about the blood. When I see the blood, we talk about the blood. And very important because the blood is the one that redeems us. The blood is the one that separated that enmity between us and God. But Paul says something. He says those who design, you must, when you're taking the blood, he speaks about the second element. And he says when you must design the body. 
It is not complete. It's not just taking the blood. You must discern the body. What is to discern the body? What is to discern the body? To discern the body is in two ways. You must understand. It's in two ways when you're taking Holy Communion. To discern the body is in two ways. One, to understand the, the, the punishment that came upon Christ's body for me to receive what I received in Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 53, 4 and 5. What we received when Christ underwent what he underwent so that I can be able to receive my healing. In Isaiah 53, verse, Isaiah 53, verse 4, it says, Surely he has what? Born our what? Give me the amplified. Please. It says, but in fact, he has born our what? He has carried our what? And pains. Yet we ignorantly assumed that he was stricken, struck down by God, and disgusted. De degraded and humiliated by him. Verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was crushed for our weaknesses. Our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, the punishment required for all our well-being fell on him, and by his stripes and wounds we are what? This is what I mean. That every time, give me verse, verse, verse 4. Is that every time that you are partaking the body of Christ, when you design what was done, is that you are designing one of, one of the things that he took away is what? He took what? Now this word griefs also means sickness. When it's translated, he took away every sickness. When I'm taking the body of Christ, I'm not just taking uh, forgiveness. I am not just taking forgiveness. I'm saying I need to discern. This is what happened to the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. But he took that punishment on our behalf. So every time that I partake of the body of Christ. This is what I'm doing. I am remembering that he took away my griefs. What is my griefs? We say it's sickness. When every time I partake of the body of Christ. I am remembering that he has carried away what? Whatever it is that has caused you to sorrow, even if you lost someone or someone re rejected you and you underwent through sorrow, when you are taking the body of Christ, design that he has already taken every... Ah. You know, some of you have not lost something. Me, I lost twins. And when I lost twins, there was a lot of sorrow. But I remember that there is a God who has taken away my word. When I look at my children right now, I celebrate God. Why? Because I know I have been through something. And about I have been through sorrow. But he has taken... And he has taken what? Don't just take it unworthily. Ah, don't just take it without designing. Every time you are taking and partaking that bread that we give you, we are giving you so that you understand and remember, he did not just take away my sins. He also dealt with my sorrow. He dealt with my sickness. He dealt with my pain. He, he dealt with what? He, uh, struck, he was struck down by God. Go to verse 5. That by his wounds, but he was wounded for what? Anything that I have gone beyond bound. <laughs> Anything that I went beyond a boundary. God has already dealt away with it. He was crushed for our what? Ah, there were there wicked people here. I was one of them. Our sins, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell upon who? Anything that I need for my well-being. Anything that I need for my well-being. That was paid. So every time we take the Holy Communion here, please discern this, that these things were done on his body so that I could be made whole. I am whole today because there was a, there was a price that was paid. For me to be well, uh, to have a well-being. Amen. Amen. I said there are two ways to design. First of all, you design the punishment that was done. The price that was paid so that you can receive the well-being. 
Now, when Paul was addressing the church of Corinth, one of the things that he was telling them is that this church, what they used to do when he was addressing the issue of Holy Communion, is that we had people, the, at this time, people used to come with their own Holy Communion. They used to come with their own Holy Communion. So, remember, there were the rich and there were the poor. And there are people who came to church and did not even have anything to, to, have, uh, uh, to, to partake as Holy Communion. Now, the rich went, crossed borders because the rich, what they used to do, they even came with a bottle of wine. So they used to get drunk with what? The Holy Communion. <laughs> so you have the poor who do not have anything to partake. And then you have the rich who have more than enough are even getting drunk with the Holy Communion. And that's why Paul was addressing this thing. And he says, discern, do not take it unworthily. And then he says, discern the body. What is he meaning when he says, discern the body? He says, you need to look at your brother. And you look at your sister. And you see them as equal. You don't see them as a poor person. It means that if I have more, I'm able to share with... Ah. Because if we are all part of the body of Christ, then I'm able to see you without judging you and see you as a member of the body of Christ. To see you as a... Give me Acts chapter 2 verse 42. 42 to 45. Look at, look at what the church used to do. And they did what? And they continued steadfastly yes. in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in what? Yes. Prayers. Verse 43. Then the fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Verse 44. Now all who believed were together. All who believed were what? And had all things what? They shared everything that they had. You see, discerning the body of Christ is not just about partaking the Holy Communion. It's for me coming here and seeing you as my brother. And my sister. And we are able to share and be in common it means that I contribute to the house of God. I do not just come and sit. I contribute because when we, st when we go to the spirit of God, we will study in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, what we have read, that the spirit of God gives men gifts. And these gifts are used to edify the church. So it's not just a matter of seeing you as my brother. It's making sure what Pastor Peter says is that we do not sit you down, but we sit you so that you can become a partaker, not only a partaker, but a contributor of the, what we are doing here. It means I need you as a... There will never be what this scripture is telling us, that there will never be a part where I do not need you, need someone else, as a part of the body of Christ. I can never work in isolation. As a matter of fact, the prayer of Christ to his disciples was not that God give them Mercedes, God give them churches, God give them congregants that will come. No, he said, make them one, just as you and I are one. That was the prayer of Christ. He said in Psalms 133, he says what? How good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in. He says this is the place where I command blessings. <laughs> this is when you discern the body of Christ and see you as my brother. And see you and, and, and challenge you to be a partaker of this. And a participator of what we are doing here. Then here is where God commands a blessing. And he has set up structures in the church. He says, first I will give you what? The apostles. 
Then I will give you the prophets. I will give you pastors. I will give you these people so that you can dedicate yourself to that doctrine that they are teaching. And as you dedicate yourself, dedicate yourself to prayer. Dedicate yourself to breaking of the bread. That's why we are starting home cells. We need home cells so that you can break bread in your houses. Amen. Amen. So that you can break bread in your houses. The church never started in buildings. The church started where people started meeting at their homes. As a matter of fact, the church of Jesus was in motion. <laughs> he was walking to one town, to another town, to another town, because the church is you. If you study the book of Acts, you will discover that when Jesus gave the disciples and told them, go to Judea, Samaria, and all these other places, the disciples remained in Jerusalem. Until Stephen was stoned. When persecution came to the church, the church discarded. And where did they scatter? Judea and Samaria, where Jesus had sent them. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that the apostles remained where? In Jerusalem. But who went to Judea and Samaria? Philip. It means that, what that means, Pastor Elvis, is that every time we speak here, let us speak the word of God. Because I don't know who is going to America next. I do not know who is going to Canada next. I do not know who is going to London next. Even Somalia, our neighbors, I don't know who is going from this church. That they need to go there and speak the word of God boldly. That's how we'll spread the church. We're not spreading the church when we are the three of us, Pastor and, and Elvis, the four of us. We're not spreading the church like that. We're spreading the church when I impact you and you're able to set up a home cell where you are and your neighbors are coming there so that you can speak to them with boldness. Amen. Every member has to participate. Every member has to participate. Let me tell you, open up your homes for home sales. Open up your house as an altar where people can come and worship God. Next Bible study, invite your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, by the way, kwa ile nyumba tunakuwa gana home sales. Give your neighbor a chance to hear the word of God. The gospel never remained with the apostles. We are preaching today because of what they did. So every member has to contribute. My, 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 I finish with this. Design the body of God by what Christ has already done for you. But also design the body of God by looking at your brother and your sister. Not just the one who is saved, but reach out to the one who is lost. Father, we thank you. We honor your name and we bless your name. We thank you for your word. That maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. The blessing of God that maketh rich and others no sorrow. The light, O oh Lord, Father, of your word, may it illuminate our lives. Open our eyes to be able to see, O oh King of kings, O oh Lord, Almighty God, and to be able to discern the body of Christ. Open our eyes to be able to discern the body of Christ, Lord. You are calling us to build. You are calling us, Lord Almighty God, to become one. You are calling us, Lord Father, to stand in the gap for someone else. You are calling us, Lord Father, to love, O King of Kings, O Lord, to spread this love to a hurting world, O King of Kings, O Lord. We thank you and we honor you, Lord Almighty God. Continue to add to our numbers. Continue to multiply us, Lord. Continue to increase us, O King of Kings, O Lord, that we sit as we fellowship, as we break bread, as we continue in prayer, O King of Kings, O Lord. May you continue to add to our numbers. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Next week we start uh, teaching on the Holy Spirit. And I hope you will make time to come early so that we can study the word of God and also be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
Are you learning something from, uh, from, uh, from the discipleship class? I am so glad that we went through this and we are still continuing on this. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. Kindly rise to your feet, say hi to somebody, welcome them in the house of the Lord, tell them it's good to see you.